All right, folks, kind of sitting by the truck here next to a busy road here. Um, we got a little weather coming in, and I'm going to do the introduction and everything and the announcements right here so we don't have to listen to the, um, now we're going to listen to the road noise. But I don't want to drown a camera. Drowning cameras gets expensive pretty quick. I got a four weight, 11 foot trout switch rod in my hands. Kind of can use it as a prop to tell everybody that we still have slots available for our August 28th and 29th spay casting clinic. Uh, these clinics are going to run, we're going to meet about 8 in the morning, we're going to run until noon. Um, looks like Pineville Sport Shop is going to provide a picnic lunch afterwards. Uh, so it's, we'll have classes both days. You can pick which day you want, Saturday or Sunday, to join in on the class. If you're interested, you have any questions, just contact me through Fish at Lost Rivers Fishing. Um, email or just contact me direct. Uh, we do have nine or ten. We're about half full, so we still got plenty of slots open. They will go fast as we get closer to August. There'll be a lot of people will be jumping in last minute. So those that there's those slots are still open for um, the August um, casting clinic. Once again, that's August 28th and 29th. Uh, really quick, um, we've had a lot of challenges, or one very big challenge this summer, trying to get videos up and, and fishing this year, but that's a discussion and a story for another time. Uh, right now, what I did is, is um, I went to the archives. I have a video that we did a few years back where I caught an Atlantic salmon. So I'm going to talk about it, tell the story of that fish. It, some of you might have seen it. It's been up on the... Um, um, web and internet and places um, in the past, but I thought I'd put a little bit more background information and tell the story about that. So, hey, fishing stories. Tell me if you like it and put it in the comment if you like the fishing stories and like to see more of them or hear more of the fishing stories. Here we go. Here we go, fish stories. In this case, it's about Atlantic salmon that I caught a few years back down on the Douglaston Salmon Run. As many of you know, I like fish, and I'm not too fussy about the fish. And in this case, Atlantic salmon rate pretty high. I mean, they're right up there with me with steelhead. They'll chase a swing and fly and then have an absolute fit over it. Here we were, the whole story started out. We were down fishing on the Douglaston salmon run. And they had, back when they were experimenting with stocking uh, brown trout in there to try to create a summer fisheries. It didn't really work out as planned, but to their credit, they did try. So we're down there about a week after they put these fish in, and we're covering some water trying to find these stocked fish. I'm not sure if these fish left or if Rick and I just suck at catching stocked brown trout. But anyways, we're covering some water, and at one point I kind of gave up with the trouty things, and I had a and I gave, went to about a size 8 owl woolly bugger, so I'm fishing for whatever it may concern. I'm just running through here and heading into the top of a pool and working down through, and I'm just not really paying much attention, and I go to take a step, and, and I get woken up. Now, mind you, we're trout fishing. We're... We got trout rods in this case. I'm fishing a nine foot five weight. You now we got our trout gear with us, our trout nets with us. And I run into this thing. And it just blows up on me. Oh, by the way, normally when I'm fishing a five weight and I'm swinging bargers or something like that, I'm using 3X tippet. And this particular day there, when I went to pull out my 3X tippet spool, I realized I had eight inches left. So I ended up having to use 4X. So keep in mind, this whole encounter with this five weight on this seven pound fish, maybe eight pounds, who knows, uh, I'm fishing with them four X. So through this entire fight, I gotta be really careful. I gotta play this fish very gently, not get it overly excited and get it really jumping and running, but keep it in the pool. Damn. And also then on the inside of the pool, the soft water, there was a lot of wood. So I had to keep it out of the wood. So there's a lot going on trying to land this fish. Now I don't overpressure it. I get the fish to blow up. I don't pop my 4X tippet, which is about 5, 6 pound test. I'm like 3X, which is usually right around 8. And, you know, 3X and a 5 weight, you can pull as hard as you want, but you can't do that with a fish like this on 4X tippet. So this, I have to just take my time, let this fish kind of not 
wear itself out without blowing it, you know, without blowing up on me. And you might note the size of the nets we're carrying. We're looking for trout. We run into this Atlantic salmon. So netting it is not going to be much of an uh, option because Rick and I were trying to figure out how we were going to net it. And we realized that's just not going to happen with these trout nets. <laughs> You're gonna have to wear this puppy out. Yeah. Told you there was a big fish there. Take time to revive them. Oh, nice. that's, that's, that's right. I get some cool fighting shots from under the water.
my only other option, practical option, was to beach it. And when you have a very large fish like this, a very hot fish, I'm not a fan of beaching it. As a lot of you know, I like to carry um, nets and no rubber line nets and stuff like that are easy on the fish because that way that's um, easier on me and the fish when if we use a net. The problem with beaching is is you drag them up on the shoreline and these fish start panicking and they can start banging their head on the on the shoreline and they can actually injure themselves and it gives themselves some brain attusions. So when this fish gets up to the shoreline you'll note that I really didn't give it much time. I ran over, grabbed the fish in the tail and got this fish well under control just so that it wouldn't be floundering around and banging its head around on the, on the um, shoreline because I'm still very concerned about a good safe release and I do want to get a bunch of photos because it is a rare fish. I am going to leave this with a few personal um, thoughts. I know the lake there's a controversy over Atlantic salmon with a lot of guys that fish out on the lake but us river guys these fish could be a great part of the future. They could give us a extend our tributary season. They're, they're gorgeous fish, great fish to fish for. They really like taking flies and I really hope going forward that there's a, a real future for these Atlantic salmon and the uh, especially our Lake Ontario tributaries. You know it's be nice to be able to extend our season, our fishing seasons into May and then maybe start a little bit earlier into August once again because these fish do tolerate a little bit warmer water temperatures than the Chinooks do or the Steelhead do and it would be a great um, opportunity to enjoy our resource a little bit longer into the season for us river fishermen. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found my babbling moderately interesting and as I mentioned before uh, if you like these fishing stories say give us more in the comments and until then see you folks this is Jay at JPEC guides and Lost River Fishing we are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service we fish the Lake Ontario tributaries and then during the spring and the summer we also fish the inland trout streams classic dry fly fishing during the heat of the summer we'll do the warm water fishing for bass and pike if you're interested in any of our islands or have any questions please feel free to email us at fish at lost rivers fishing com hope to hear from you and if you have any questions feel free to contact us